I want to bring in Katie Hobbs now. She's the Secretary of State of Arizona. Secretary Hobbs, thanks for joining us again today. I think I was speaking with you a few hours ago uh, this morning on Good Morning America. Thanks for coming back. What's the latest on where things stand in Arizona? Uh, well, in terms of numbers, uh, it looks like we're about 450,000 uh, ballots left to count statewide. The bulk of those, obviously, Maricopa County, just under 300,000 left in Maricopa County. And um, what we have been told by Maricopa County election officials is that they anticipate um, counting the bulk of those, all of those late early ballots that still are being signature verified uh, by this weekend. Uh, so what I think that means is that we'll have a a much more clear picture of where things stand here in Arizona tomorrow. So that, that, that's tomorrow. What, 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 what can we be expecting tonight? I know you're, you're saying you're going to be releasing more results later this evening. Yep, Maricopa County has told us that they're planning to uh, upload their daily tabulation totals every day at 7 p.m., so 9 p.m. your time. Um, and so that's when we'll see the next you know, big update to election results here. Okay, and I know you've, we were just talking about these demonstrations that you've seen at some polling sites in Arizona. Uh, how big of a concern is that? Well, we're certainly concerned for everyone's safety. Um, we're talking about election workers who have been working around the clock to make sure they're doing their job and counting every vote, um, which is, you know, what these protesters are asking for. So I'm really not sure what they're trying to accomplish because they're actually creating a disruption an attraction from these election workers doing their job of counting every vote, which is what they're what they're demanding. Has it affected the mood inside the rooms at all? You know, I think that these folks are just really focused on getting their job done. I know that they're um, everyone I talked to said that they everybody was safe and they had worked with the sheriff's office to ensure that um, that you know there was nothing happened to any of the employees. Uh, so I think they're just really wanting to, uh, they know the, that everybody's waiting on Arizona and they're wanting to get this done. And this is a nonpartisan process? Yes, absolutely. Secretary, thanks for joining us today. Tom Yamas, why don't you go up to the board on Arizona and, and give us a sense of where these votes are coming from. Yeah, I want to give you a, a sense of what's happening in Maricopa County because this is the largest county. It includes Phoenix. It includes Mesa. Maricopa really is America writ small because you have the big city, you have the small city, you have ranches, you have farmers, you have diversity with Latino voters. But this is the big headline, George. Joe Biden's on top in Maricopa County. Four years ago, President Trump was on top. And that's where we just heard from Secretary Hobbs that more than 250,000 votes are still outstanding. The other big part of Arizona is Pima County. There are also outstanding votes there. And Joe Biden is performing higher than Hillary Clinton was four years ago. So these are all good trend lines. And one more I want to show you, George. We talk about the early vote. Uh, and we look at Arizona, what the trend line is right now. Joe Biden's on top there. So you have three major data points that are showing Arizona is still in Joe Biden's favor. But I got to tell you, in the rural parts of the state, Donald Trump, we've been talking about, he's been able to build his base as well as Biden's been able to build his base. The rural vote is still coming out for Donald Trump in a big way. His numbers are very similar, especially uh, in Pinal County, which is sandwiched in between Maricopa and Tucson. Uh, he's performing a little lower, but he is where he needs to be. So we're going to have to wait and see. 69,000 vote difference around there. Still more than 400,000 ballots. So there's still a lot of vote out there, George. Okay, Tom, thanks. Let's go to Nate Silver. On the Nate, we've heard several times now that the Trump strategy he really does hinge on overtaking Joe Biden in Arizona from inside uh, their camp. How realistic at this point? It's plausible given a certain set of assumptions. What's weird about Arizona is that in most states you have mail votes that are very Democratic. In Arizona, the votes that arrived early in the mail were very Democratic also. The ones that are, are, are arrived late and are being counted now were more GOP. Um, though Trump has to win the remaining votes by about 17 or 18 points. We have to, we're not sure if there are different categories of ballots. There are also ballots that are dropped off on election day, which may not be as Republicans. So Trump can win Arizona if like every assumption that you make is right. It's a plausible story. Would I bet on it? Probably not. Um, but you know, it's a, it's a theory of the case at least. But if it came in exactly as it came in early this morning, late last night, is that enough to do it? That would be recount territory. It's exactly, I mean, Trump needed to win by these votes by about 18 points. They were about Trump plus 17. So it would be really to, to a recount threshold. Okay, with Johnson in Arizona, anything new out there? 
Well, George, I just want to point to a couple things that both Nate and Tom pointed to there. Pima County. Democrats are, are focusing on Pima County right now because that traditionally leans to the left. Tucson, another another big uh, urban area there. They're hoping that some of the outstanding ballots from Pima County will help bolster Joe Biden in a way that Donald Trump can't catch up. At the same time, I think Democrats are a little surprised at how well Donald Trump is performing with some of these absentee ballots here in Maricopa County. Um, I think that he's been overperforming what a lot of Democrats uh, estimated he would. And again, the Trump campaign and said they knew this would happen based on people who dropped off their ballots on election day. So it really is unknown which way this thing could go. I also want to bring up another scenario that we really haven't talked about much, and that is the Senate race here in Arizona. Democrat Mark Kelly, the astronaut, the husband of Gabby Giffords, who, as we know, was shot and nearly killed back in 2011, is now leading Martha McSally, the Republican, and he is actually outperforming Joe Biden. So it raises the possibility of a split ticket situation here in Arizona where you could have, if Donald Trump could catch up and win the state, the Republican there, and then a Democratic senator. And if you just take a step back here, back in 2011, people split the ticket multiple times. More than 150,000 people voted for the Republican governor and then voted for the Democratic senator, Kirsten Sinema. We actually spoke to an independent voter who voted for Obama and then is voting for Donald Trump and also Mark Kelly. So there's that independent spirit here that is difficult to predict. One third of the voters in Arizona are independents. And I think that's why there is some anxiety on both sides because people really don't know what's going to happen. And it could George. take days to count one. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.